Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. And it's Saturday. It's Bolo Day. To anybody who doesn't know what a Bolo is, um, it's basically... I know what it is. Well, go ahead. Be on the lookout. Indeed it is. Uh, these are things that you need to be on the lookout for. And we give you a list of what they are. And then hopefully you can find these things when you're out there. Uh, Mr. Magazine was running a little bit behind today for because of a family commitment. So I picked his bolos out. So this is going to be as much a surprise to him. Actually, it's going to be even more of a surprise to you because yeah. you don't know what I picked out. True. Yeah. <laughs> so should be should be good. These are always fun episodes. Take it away, Mr. Magazine. What's the first item that you All picked right. out? Oh, it looks like uh, Chuck Norris had uh, twin brothers, triplets here, apparently. Chuck Norris Karate Commandos 1986 vintage lot of three figures. And one for probably around, I'm guessing, 20 bucks. I had a couple of questions about this. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Not that he needs them, of course, but did Chuck Norris have weapons? I believe, I believe he would have come with some type of weapon. He would have come sure. with some kind of weapon. You okay. know, certain of them might have guns, certain might have, you know, nunchucks, something like that. Right, yeah. right. Um, and my second question is, I don't know, doesn't this seem kind of low priced? It does seem low priced. So um, we had this horde of figures we pulled out from my lister, and I said, let's do this. Anything $20 or more list by itself. Anything under that, if it's a $10 figure, try and lot them together as long as it makes sense to lot them together. Right. So I think that's what he's been doing. Um, maybe these loose, without weapons and accessories, go for about 10 bucks a piece. Okay. You know, yep. so. Yeah, we'll but see. They're, they're kind of common. I mean, they're not, you know, they were never really popular and hot. And, you know, obviously unopened, they're going to be I'm worth more. I'm not saying that to Chuck Norris. Uh, but, you know, they're probably worth 10 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. is. All right, next up. You know, he doesn't push himself up. Yeah. He pushes the earth down. Of course, yeah, of course okay. he does. As long as you know that. Uh, next up, Bluegrass Ultrasonic Silverhawks Kenner figure, 1987, 137.50, and uh, I've never seen this before in my life, but it looks like he's got some accessories with him. Uh, looks like if we priced him low, it still would have found his price anyway. So 20 bids, that's yeah. kind of crazy on yeah. that. And it looks like he's in good shape too. And that's a figure that I've obviously never seen, and I'm sure a lot of people have never <clears throat> seen before either. That's kind yeah. of an interesting figure there. Yeah. So, Obviously, if you have an opportunity to pick up a lot of uh, loose figures cheap, mm -hmm. do so because uh, yeah. probably nobody really knows that this is a Especially good Especially 1980s figure. stuff. You really can't go wrong with any vintage 80s figures. All right, next up. We Belong Dead, issue 13, summer 2014. Creature from the Black Lagoon. It looks like they listed everything good over there. Um, 20 bucks, not too bad. Yeah, see, and that seems low to me. Yeah. I don't know why, only because I know the Creature, and that's always been a bolo. Uh, I know <clears throat> Creature stuff does sell very well. There's a, yeah. Is it a popular mechanics or popular science magazine from, I think, the early 1960s that has the mm. Creature from the Black Lagoon on the cover? That definitely is also a bolo out there. So yeah. it just, I kind of was surprised that this only went for $20. Yeah, I think I guess. what's happening is, we're, you know, I'm getting spread thin, so I'm trying to prep stuff for my listers. He's not the best eBay magazine lister. I usually stack them in. What I think is worth, mm -hmm. you know, 20, 20. I probably would have, doesn't seem like I would have priced this one at 20 bucks, but it may have slipped out of my hands and went, right. and went into the $20 pile. Or sometimes if I'm sorting and I got 80, $20 ones and a couple 30s, I might just say, yeah, I just make them all 20, you know, but um, who knows? But still, you know, I'm not, I don't think it's too old. It's like you said, it's not even 10 years old. No, right. So. Yeah. But see, I could have went for 25, 30 maybe. Next up for me, Roberto Clemente, Pirates, Louisville Slugger, 125 baseball bat, uh, 140 bucks. No, that's um, a store model. I would believe so, yes. Yeah. Let me get a little close up here. and Yeah, it looks like a newer style store model. It doesn't look like one he would have used, uh, this particular style. But, it, you know, it made it came out in the 80s. Oh, really? Yeah, this looks like it wouldn't be. They, would, they wouldn't have made it look like this in the 70s. Definitely not. Oh, yeah. so I didn't know they did throwback yeah. people yeah. back then. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, would that have been sold more to the collector's market? Or, or would kids have been expected to buy that and use that? I would think, well, if they're selling the 80s, probably kids would buy it and use it. You know, I'm thinking, okay. you know, yeah. You know, if it came out in the 90s or 2000s, maybe more collectors, you know, people our age would buy that and put with my, you know, your Clemente collection or something right. like that. Get it autographed? No. Okay. Next up, Spawn number one, Page Puncher Edition Image Comics. Uh, looks like it went for probably, I'm guessing, 12 to $15. What is it? <clears throat> uh, it's a, it is a comic, but it's, I think it's a newer reprint version of some sort. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. a comic. Yeah, oh, it is a comic, Okay. Yeah. Because I saw Page Puncher, whatever. I was yeah. wondering, like, if it wasn't like a, yeah, um, it's some like a notebook or something. It's a variant, something. but I think it's a newer variant. So it might have been like ten years ago or something like that. And, um, 
Yeah, or it might even been one one with a comic. Now that I see the back of the comic or one there. of the toys, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it might have been with a figure. Yeah, that yeah. might be. Yeah, maybe that's. Oh, okay, that. okay. Yeah, I just yeah. I didn't know exactly yeah. what it was, um, mm -hmm. and that's why I brought that up because again, yeah. Page Puncher threw yeah. me off, and I wasn't yeah, familiar with it. I'm pretty sure that. that did come with the action figures from McFarland. Yep. Definitely. Okay. Yep. Next one, mine. Uh, indeed, it is. All right. Next up, the thing from another world, 1951 one sheet movie poster, uh, thirty five bucks. Now you had a whole bunch of posters, and yep. you had some posters that went for one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars. Yeah. I chose this one for two reasons. <clears throat> number one, you had two of them that looked very, very similar, if not the same. Mm -hmm. And number two, the price seemed kind of low for it. Yeah, like I said, they're they're probably running comps and terror peaking, so I think they're probably going on the lower end instead of the higher end. Which, uh, you know, we'll have a talk with them and see if we can kind of tweak that a little bit. Yeah, because you had other posters, again, that went for 100 like Zombie or something like yeah, that, yeah, went for $150, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. You know, if we had a couple of the same one, it might be a little more common or less popular. Who knows? You know? Right. It's a neat-looking so, item, though. Yeah, yeah, very cool. 27 by 40, and it's folded yep. originally? Yep. Okay, so that makes the shipping very, very easy yeah. on that. Cool. Very nice. All right. Maybe well. I don't know. Click the next we'll one. We'll see. see. We'll see. No, oh, you I guess are. not. I'm still here with uh, Silverhawk Figures. Windhammer Silverhawks, it's vintage 1987, uh, $206, and definitely can't argue with that. Never seen that before in my life. I was just, <laughs> I was, we were all looking, every yeah. one of us sitting here is saying, Mr. Magazine, tell us about Silverhawks. Um, it was, I believe, a TV show. Oh, really? It's short lived, just like the comic, and then uh, the figures were obviously low production. Yeah. Oh, so it must have been one of those yep. things they were hoping it hit and it didn't. Yeah, and it was, so that's I think it was why like it's... one season, it was a small run, you know, but, you know, they're cool alien type creatures and so forth, yeah. Now, what would that be worth on. Card or whatever, five hundred bucks. I would say a thousand in mint. I mean, you got to go five times it. I'm sure if it's mint condition on card. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Alrighty, let's see what I picked up here. Manchetti Magazine, January twenty eighth, nineteen sixty seven. Now look at those keywords: Jackie Kennedy, Charles. I should have actually put Charlie, but it did say Charles inside. Charlie Chaplin and Sophia Loren. Oh, loaded. That is indeed one of those lucky magazines you got. Now, I did put pictures of each of them. There, Charlie Chaplin is mm -hmm. looking dapper. And there, Sophia Loren is looking beautiful. Um, again, that right there is one of those. I have no idea what sold it. Uh, any one of those three definitely could. All three are good sure. keywords. Once in a while, you get lucky and you get a magazine like that. $32, cannot argue. Cool. Yellowstone, Washington, BOAC, Hilton Hotels brochure, lot of 11. Took a $20 off for free shipping on this. However, I know you're not a huge uh, brochure person, but what era would you think these are, just from looking at them? Mm, 90s. I'm thinking they probably are. 1980s to 2000s. Yeah, right in the middle. And including two Washington lottery clear cases. So it wasn't even 11 mm. brochures. It was nine brochures and those. Yeah. Um, so I got a couple of bucks each out of the brochures, which... Again, sometimes you're lucky to get that out of stuff from the 40s and 30s. Yeah, right, right. Um, so the fact that I was able to get that, why was I able to get that? Probably not a lot of people are listing this newer no, stuff. Right, exactly. and, and that's why True. Um, everybody wants to rush in and get the older stuff, which is fine. But a lot of stuff, there's that, I'm not going to call it a sweet spot. It's whatever the opposite of a sweet spot is, the unsweet spot, yeah. where brochures from the 20s and 30s are really really good mm -hmm. newer brochures are really really good because no one lists them right. and then everybody's got the stuff from the 50s through the 70s <clears throat> yeah well they made it you know they probably made a ton of them during their heyday but the newest stuff is probably lower production well and the other thing too is even let's just say they made a hundred thousand of each mm -hmm. People look at the thing from 1953 and go, oh, this is old. Yeah, it's worth keeping. But not I'm going to keep it, right, yeah. and I'm going to list it, and I'm going to sell it, yeah. and all this, and you're battling against everybody else. Meanwhile, True. and then think about it, you didn't go anywhere with your family back in 1953. No. You went somewhere with them in 1993. So True. what has more meaning to you, the yeah. 1993 one? True. So that's kind of a mind shift that a lot of times people have to make. Um, yeah, obviously, an 1893 brochure, all bets are off because that's so yeah. old. But you get into the 50s and 60s, sometimes the 90s stuff is actually better, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Uh, up next, I don't really don't generally sell photos, but I did end up selling this one. Pope John the 23rd, Papal Audience, photograph, February 20th, 1963. Um, and there on the back, 
it says it's the Papal audience, February 1963, which is how I knew what it was, and I did a little bit of research just to verify that there. Cool. But I got twenty dollars out of a out of a photograph. I think it was eight by ten. I'm very very happy with that because sure. I don't generally deal with photographs, mm -hmm. and you know it took three years to sell. But again, can't argue with that whatsoever. Yeah. Rochester Eat, 75 years of classic faves and craves, soft cover book, New York restaurants, food. Took a $20 offer on this, but happy to see it go, only because, again, it's just one of those things that I picked up in a lot. Um, how, many, how many of them could they have made? A thousand? That's true, too. Yeah, probably not a ton of them to start with. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is I didn't buy it per se. It came in a lot of stuff from a collection. So I probably paid 50 cents for it or something like that yeah. out across the lot. Um, now, it's one of those things you put it up. And why did I put it up? Because I have a Rochester, New York section in my store. Mm -hmm. So I figured at some point somebody who collects Rochester stuff would be interested. And sure, sure. enough, they were. Cool. Uh, next up. Schwinn Bicycle Paramount Racers Brochure 1930s Bobby Thomas Cecil Yates I got really excited when I saw this out at the estate sale I said oh this is going to be really really good I forget what I paid for it I, I paid five bucks something really like that yeah. which is more than I usually pay for stuff I was pretty happy about it then I get home and they don't actually go for very much mm. and I said they're better than what people are asking and selling yeah. them for um so I ended up asking $62 and got full price on it. Nice. Um, some awesome bikes in there for the 1930s. Now, I did do some research into it as to what the Paramount Racers were and all that kind of stuff um, in order to kind of get the date on there. Listed a couple of the more famous bicyclists or the ones whose names could fit, one or the other. But I ended up getting $62. But my point is you can't always go with what other people are asking. There are a lot of people out there who undersell their items. Mm -hmm. you know. And they this exact one wasn't up, but similar ones were up in the $30 to $40 range. And I said, no, this is better than that. Yeah. And <clears throat> indeed it was. Cool. Now we've got new comps. And the last item we have here. Monsanto Disneyland Hall of Chemistry brochure, 1956. Basically, if it's older and it's Disney, pick it up. Yeah. Basically, most things Disney, except the really, really common postcards, do end up selling. I got fifty dollars out of this wow. with a crease down the brochure, or you know, down the middle of it. Hmm. But you can't argue with that whatsoever. Um, nice. Oops, that's a nice, really bad photo there in the last one. But um, again, got fifty dollars out of something rather like this, uh, seven by nine and a quarter, four panels, two sided, from nineteen fifty six. So it doesn't even have a ton of content in it. Sure. Um, but Hall of Chemistry actually was uh, set up at Disneyland back in nineteen fifty six. So huh. it was uh, not a long. I don't believe it's still there. No. I don't think so. <laughs> um, but again, when you see vintage Disney stuff, definitely do pick it up. Uh, you'll pick it up for $5 or under. People will kind of look at the Disney and ask a little more. However, they might miss the logo on it. It's down on the bottom right, as you can see. Right, yeah. They might miss the logo and only ask a dollar, but if they even if they do see it's Disney, they're gonna ask, ask five bucks on it is what you'd pay for something like this at a flea market. Right. So that leaves you plenty of money there to be made. Um, hopefully that helps you a little bit. Do hit the like button if you could, and we will see you next video. Take care, bye-bye.